Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. Sisters who watch. NBA playoffs. Hey y'all, hey. Hello. Hi. Hi Good everyone. To be back. Welcome to Sisters Who Watch. I'm Shelby. And I'm Laura. And we're sisters who watch everything. TV, movies, sports, concerts, and even hours and hours of basketball. A lot of basketball. <laughs> A lot. Seven games times, however. We love to watch and we love talking about it even more. Today we're watching the 2023 NBA, NBA playoffs. playoffs. Woo. Woo! The end to the 2022-23 NBA season. That's right. Long season. We know basketball, like baseball, is one of the longer seasons. So the NBA started last October and just ended in June. Crazy. Right. Long it season, a lot of games, a lot of basketball. So we're focusing on the playoffs. That's right. Yeah. Lots of basketball, lots of time, but we're excited to talk <laughs> Laura, about Laura, you the sound playoffs. so excited to talk about basketball. Woo! basketball yes what's funny though is we grew up playing so you might not be excited now but we grew up no uh, I am excited to talk about it sports fans yes and we played basketball growing up we did so um I believe I I was a center uh growing up Shelby you also played center but I think also forward too right yeah I was a four five or forward center so I yeah. would go back and forth. Personally, I prefer being forward because center, you get beat up all the time, getting the rebounds, elbows. <laughs> Ugh. It's it tough. Horrible. Tough yeah. being down low. Tough yeah, you really do get beat on up your down feet. there. Ugh. Get Scra- beat up scratches. Yes. Time. You know, girls would have long fingernails. Tough. <laughs> rough down there at the center yikes yeah basketball was rough at times yeah but we liked but, playing it yeah it was still fun we I definitely mm-hmm. enjoyed playing basketball growing yeah. up yeah um and you know as native New Yorkers I guess we grew up Knicks fans but they were never that good they were irrelevant our entire childhood <laughs> yes that yes. might be tough to say but it's real the only it's exciting true. moment or that's not fair Two exciting moments. Carmelo Anthony, when he came, kind of returned mm-hmm. home, right? Right. But he didn't do anything. No. And then Lynn Sanity. Lynn Remember Sanity. Lynn Sanity? <laughs> Can't forget that. I it was like eight month period when everyone was like so excited. Jerry Lynn, Jerry Lynn. Oh, yeah. oh. But besides that, completely irrelevant, you know? I know. Tough. Well, this year, they there was a little excitement. In the offseason, the Knicks signed Jalen Brudson from the Mavericks so they were very excited because he's a hometown kid and Mm -hmm. he definitely brought a lot of energy to the Knicks this season and they made the playoffs again but didn't get very far (laughs) even though we technically grew up Knicks fans I feel like I follow mostly players rather than teams and honestly I think the NBA has become a players league especially since all these players hop around to different teams all the time no loyalty to a team no. or fan base. So you honestly no have loyalty. to follow players. Right. And I know that um, growing up, LeBron was super, I mean, he still is so popular, but growing up, that was his prime. And our brother loves LeBron. Obsessed. The, the LeBron. biggest LeBron fan, like the biggest Cleveland fan when he first, you know, obsessed. came up, the biggest Miami Heat fan, like obsessed again biggest cleveland fan when he came back and now get he has all the laker gear all the laker gear. i mean he'll follow lebron wherever he goes literally anywhere literally anywhere so and exactly so a very i feel like these days it's all about the players it's not really about the team or the the city it's yeah it's about the players so laura who's your favorite player interesting um I mean, I think we're definitely a Steph Curry household. We grew up really, really loving him. Love him. They yeah, can. For sure. And for context, our mom is from Northern California. She grew up rooting for both the Kings and the Warriors. And when the Warriors started becoming really good, she was yeah. very excited about the Warriors and Steph Curry because, you know, mm-hmm. NorCal representation. Steph's my favorite player. I also really like Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul. You know, I, I like LeBron, but I wouldn't say I'm like a huge fan, like Jason. Yeah. That's another level. You didn't you didn't like Space Jam? The new legacy? Yeah, right. The new legacy. 
it was fine. <laughs> Not the oh. best sports movie I've seen. No, really? No. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't. And, but I'd say overall, I probably watch more NBA than you do. Yeah, I feel like the NBA, there's so many games happening all the time. It's hard to stay as plugged in to me, but I do yeah. enjoy the playoffs more than the regular season mm-hmm. for sure. Um, so what were kind of your expectations going into the playoffs this year? Yes. The first thing was that there wasn't a clear front runner. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's because people were underestimating the Nuggets, who, spoiler alert, ended up winning the whole thing. <gasps> But it felt like there was a lot of parody and it was really unclear mm-hmm. who was going to come out on top. And then, so I went in honestly unsure of like who was going to win the title, which I think is really interesting. There was a lot of parody across the NBA. Mm. I also was hoping Golden State would repeat. But to be honest, the second at the beginning of the season, Draymond and Green and Jordan Poole had their drama if you haven't heard of it, you could probably find the video online. Oh, Draymond yeah. Green punched Jordan Poole at a closed <laughs> practice. So one, everyone was trying to figure out how that e- video was even released. Yeah. But that just derailed, I think, the chemistry, the energy for the team. So even though the Warriors are good and Steph's great, I just think they weren't, like, even though I wanted them to repeat, I just felt like they still were never the same post that altercation. No, that's very fair. And Draymond, you know, stays getting in trouble. Oh my goodness. (laughs) You like him if you're the Warriors, but when you're against him, you're like, oh wow, he's the most annoying player ever. I bet. But yeah, (laughs) especially now being, you know, our family, we like the Warriors. Of course, now me being in the Bay Area, I'm like, yeah, Warriors can't do no wrong. Um, But yeah, Draymond, just such a troublemaker. (laughs) Trouble. Trouble, crazy. trouble, trouble. It's crazy. Um, I'd say who- the other expectation heading into the playoffs was who really is the best player in the league, the MVP. Right. There was a lot of debate who it was going to be. And now the NBA releases who wins the league awards during the playoffs. So it was unclear who would eventually get it. And the top three finalists were Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo so there's a lot of debate all three teams are in the playoffs and there's a lot of debate about who would win Joel Embiid from the 76ers finally won after being the runner-up in MVP voting the last few years but then his team gets bounced from the playoffs and the his opponent Mm -hmm. in MVP voting Nikola Jokic wins the title with the Nuggets so I think it further led to the debate like who really is the best player right really yeah it's really about the game at the end of the day and how the team does because as we see with LeBron and all these other players Mm -hmm. one one person and a lot of people were saying you know Jimmy Butler and the Heat one person cannot carry a whole team so it's really about how that team does on that night Mm -hmm. truly I'd say there were a lot of themes going into the post Uh as well Shocker, the NBA has a lot of unhappy stars. You've probably <laughs> seen that. People requesting trades or blowing up teams. A really big blow up happened before the postseason started where the super team in Brooklyn of like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, they just blew it up and they traded right. Kevin Durant to Phoenix, of course, joining the super team. And then Kyrie Irving to Dallas. <laughs> Dallas didn't even make the playoffs and then Kevin Durant and the Suns made it but looked rusty and I think when you trade someone last minute to join your team there's a lack of chemistry you're trying to figure it out but it was interesting that that also happened for like the Lakers but they actually end up having good chemistry post a lot Mm. of trades like they traded out Russell Westbrook and got in D'Angelo Russell like they actually looked pretty good during the postseason um, so it was interesting to see like the aftermath of a lot of trades and how that impacted right and we're seeing that again now there's lots you know the playoffs just ended but there's so many trades happening causing chaos the NBA offseason started with a bang that boom, was for boom. Sure. yeah boom boom <laughs> 
pop pop um <laughs> we'll talk about that at the end um yeah so I know that you also love Giannis we're big Giannis fans he, in I, this household I love his voice when he's <laughs> got his cute little accent from Greece it's great. we love it love his voice but also he seems really nice he posts funny things on social like he's right. a good guy yeah he does but unfortunately you know another big theme unpredictable postseason oh Giannis and the Bucks. We're, out, we're knocked, knocked out, out of the first round. The first round. Crazy. Which is crazy because you wouldn't think that Giannis and the Bucks, the number one seed, the defending champs from two years ago, would go out in the first round to the eighth seeded Miami Heat. Great cry. Crazy. So that was like the biggest shocker. And there were a lot of shocking upsets, I'd say, this postseason, but that was the biggest one. So I felt sad for Giannis. Mm -hmm. And then, I'm not sure if you saw this, but there was a viral interview that he had that after when they lost, a reporter, journalist, asked Giannis, would you say that this season was a failure because you didn't win a title? And he, like, went off and was like, no. You know, Michael Jordan played... You know, mm. many years, he has six titles. The years he didn't win a title, was that a failure? And he literally went on this whole thing. And I thought it was, a it, people that weren't following sports were talking about it mm. because it showed a good lesson on putting effort in. And even if you might not win the gold, it doesn't mean right. everything you did to get there is a failure. Wow, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. We love Giannis. We love to see it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And there are also a lot of injuries, which disrupted a lot of teams, different momentums. Yeah, there was, of course, the Clippers never staying healthy. Never. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George both got hurt. Paul George right before the playoffs and then Kawhi Leonard halfway through or like a quarter of the way through. Bruh. You really hate to see it. It's a, People like to say the playoffs are like a I'm not the people like to say that the Clippers are a snake bitten franchise because they always seem to have these issues mm -hmm. injuries bad calls you name it they somehow right. always have problems in the playoffs and the fact that Ka Kawhi was playing and when he was playing they looked like they were going to give the Suns some trouble and then he got hurt. And I was like, well, I guess it's over for the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Right. And did you hear that LeBron also got hurt in the playoffs? Oh my gosh, yeah. It's it, like everyone. No one can say how Giannis hard. got hurt. So I will say, even though the Bucks got on the first round, what happened is Giannis got hurt in like the first game. So he was out a mm. few games. Yeah. Let's say, so bad they were bumped in the first round, but Giannis was not 100% healthy. Yeah, that will make a big difference if your big star difference. is not 100%. Literally. Right. And that reminded me when we went to see, Shelby and I saw a couple NBA games this season, actually. And we went to see we the Clippers did. at uh, Crypto.com Arena, uh, formerly Ugh. known as Staples Center. Awful name. Um, all the stars were injured. Laura, there are all bad. these old bench warmers on the court. So it just yeah. reminded that the Clippers can rarely stay healthy. Laura, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> One of my least favorite things I watched last year. And beyond, you know, injuries and surprises with certain people winning, I'd say the biggest shock was the Miami Heat, the really? eighth seeded Miami Heat making the NBA finals. Yeah, wild. Crazy. Wild. A team that was very inconsistent. They were in the play-in tournament. They somehow make it to the NBA Finals. And they lost, but they don't really have super big names besides right. Jimmy Butler and Kyle, Ra Kyle Lowry, but he's not really in his prime anymore. And mm -hmm. they have a lot of role players. Tyler Hero was hurt from the iconic Jack Harlow song. <laughs> <laughs> and, iconic uh, he was hurt so they it's crazy that they were able to do what they did but it was really right. jimmy butler bam Adebayo putting the team on their backs and 
and the coaching was good. They have a really good coach in Eric Spolstra, but they just, they couldn't, couldn't get over to the finish line. No. And speaking of a team that could, you know, get to the finish (sighs) line, the Denver Nuggets seem to be on cruise control this entire playoffs. I think what hurts the Denver Nuggets is they're based in Denver. Yeah. They don't have a big star. Or, like, yes, Nikola Jokic has won the MVP twice and is really good, but he doesn't have the same kind of star power as a LeBron. No. Or he doesn't have that star quality. Yeah. Right. Seth Curry. Yeah. Yeah. So I think because of that, he just doesn't have as many fans in the general public i think a lot of critics i think a lot of sportscasters people in the industry know how good he is and support him but the general mm-hmm. public i don't really think they no care one knows as who he much is. or know yeah. who he is which i feel bad about because to be honest right. i didn't really watch or care about the nuggets and then watching them like manhandle the timberwolves and the lakers i was like oh like they're really good so I even was not giving them their credit or paying attention. And I watch basketball. So can you imagine people who like don't, they have no idea. Yeah, they have no they idea are. who that is. Yeah. So if it's... you ask anyone on the street who Nikola Jokic is, they'd be like, stare at you with a blank face. Blank face. <laughs> Yikes. Oop. You hate to say it, but you it's true. You hate to see it. To facts see are it. facts. Facts and are facts. <laughs> something else, another theme was just it feels like the coaches were dropping like flies right just Literally, everyone was getting yeah. fired it was everybody crazy and coaches that like mike boldenhoser on the milwaukee bucks was fired right yes they got bumped in the first round but Giannis got hurt it came out that his he had a family member pass away Ooh, the oh the coach no. did during the playoffs and mm. then they fire him after he won the title two years ago crazy tough monty williams on phoenix suns former coach of the year brought his team to the finals before they fired him doc wow. rivers one of the probably more famous coaches he's been mm-hmm. on philly the celtics the clippers fired him like no one was safe no one was safe <laughs> no one was safe didn't matter if you had won a title one coach of the year no, no safe. don't matter so it was very Crazy. unpredictable offseason the play i mean very unpredictable postseason for sure hard to keep up with everything definitely and i know you talked about the playing tournament a bit i know that was one of your favorite moments right yeah. you enjoyed it so for people that don't know the nba instated a play-in tournament a few seasons ago where the seeds seven through ten participate in this play-in tournament to make it to the playoffs so if you seed above six or higher you're automatically in but mm-hmm. if you are seven, you'd play number eight for seven seed. If you're if eight seed loses that game, they play the winner of the nine ten game, and then eight and nine play for the eight seed. And Got it's it. so interesting because it has led people a lot of teams that are on the bubble to still have a chance to make the playoffs. Right. And you see an eight seed like Miami, they made it to the finals. So I think it gives hope right. to a lot of teams on the edge. And I think that also shows there's a lot more parity. So you could be like a eight, nine, ten seed and still, you know, be a tough out in the playoffs. Yeah. So that's no, that's fine. a really we good point. We love an underdog story. Yes, we and love an we underdog story. And we saw the Lakers who were in the plan as the seven seed and the Heat in the plan as the eight seed make it well into the playoffs. Right. No, so that's great. We love an underdog story, like yes, you said. We do. Right? And speaking of the Lakers, we I know both of us really enjoyed seeing the Golden State Lakers series. And as we mentioned, this is a Steph Curry, you know, a friendly podcast. Love we love the him, Currys. Uh, we love Golden State. Yes. So it was really exciting to see uh, Golden State versus the Kings. So I know. Exciting. For our family, especially, we mentioned our mom is a Kings fan, also has rooted for Golden State in the past. So it was cool seeing those teams, you know, an hour bus ride apart, um, go head to head. And then, of course, the Lakers Warriors was also very entertaining. And we actually saw a Warriors game last year, this 
for this season and it was so fun so fun yeah the warriors are great for tv and yeah. warriors kings they're like no cow rivals that was right. the best series went seven games really good so good and it was the first round so that was such a good series and then lakers warriors what more can you ask for i think it I mean, also went on. seven games you have lebron steph la versus sf it was great so yeah. we had that's what's so crazy about this playoffs you had a lot of good series early on and then it ended with Denver, kind of, Miami, eh. kind of a dud. Right. So after all the hype, it's sad it ended that way. For sure. Okay. But I know I know we also love the inside the NBA crew. I mean, they're oh so gosh. fun. They have such a great they're dynamic. Shaq is always so favorite. funny. So <laughs> inside the NBA is on TNT and it's a pregame, postgame, and like halftime show with Charles Barkley, Shaq, Kenny, and Ernie. And they analyze the games, provide their PV, right. play games. They're hilarious. It's my favorite commentary by a group for a sports event. They're Period. so good. Period. <laughs> so funny. They're gone fishing segment. They're always joking and having a good time. Like we need more content like that. Yes, we do. They're always so funny. They don't, what's so good about them, they never take themselves too seriously, you know? Yes. They're always a good time. Um, And another, you know, we talked about how we're long-suffering, you know, Knicks fans. It was hard to see them go down again. Yeah, this we season. didn't even dwell on it much, but it is, <laughs> you get your hopes up, but no, they're not that good. So it's weird. Yeah. Like, you get your hopes up, but you know they're not as good as the other teams. It's, and, yeah, it's giving Jets. Yeah, it's giving Jets. <laughs> New York teams, long New York teams are rough, You need to see rough. it. We're just not yeah. doing what we need to do. No. And similarly, the 76ers, there that was hype. Was People were getting excited, but they couldn't get it done. they were definitely better than the Knicks. For sure. But also didn't get it done. Missed opportunity. If I was, like, they were up against the Celtics. And I think we're at home to win the series and then drop the last two games. Like right. you can't, you can't let that happen. No, you can't. You can't. can't let that happen. What were some of your other least favorite moments? There were some no-show performances. You get to the playoffs, it's big lights. People get a little nervous, a little choking right. energy. Unfortunately, Donovan Mitchell and his new new season on the Cleveland Cavaliers did not play well this mm, mm-hmm. postseason and I really like him so I was sad to see that James Harden was also super inconsistent like the first two games of the Celtic Sixer series he was amazing because Joel Embiid was like hurt speaking of injuries and it, right. then he started to no show again just be consistent let's be really good please we need that I know we do we do and talking about lack of consistency, we said that the end of the finals were just kind of disappointing because the beginning of the really playoffs was really good, but then it just kind of ended like, eh. Yeah. It felt like the excitement around the NBA really, really dwindled. It did. And I mean, Laura, you barely watched the the playoffs at all and I know I was I was into the Golden State Kings series that was a good series that was right and I was plugged into the Lakers Warriors but once that ended literally they got worse the games the series got worse the games got worse and we were actually on a family trip at the time of the NBA finals and we literally forgot it was on the last game was no one watched and no one watched I don't think that's ever happened to me before we were like, at we're like dinner, oh, is it on? And they were like, oh, we got a notification. Denver Nuggets win. We're like, what? We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so bad. So I mean, do bad. you know any Denver Nuggets fans? No. I know None. one person. I don't know any. Well, I think I, I told know. you the story that I was in a store and someone was had like a Denver shirt and someone was like, mm-hmm. oh, you guys must be really excited about your team in the doing so well in the nba they looked lost they're like wait what What are you talking about i'm like how are you from denver you don't know the nuggets are good that's crazy lol so i don't know what's going on in denver but 
Yeah. So Not, that's a good segue. I don't know how excited their fans truly were. No. Yikes. That's a good segue to our uh to our categories. So for love to hate, we did have the Denver Nuggets because it's like we're happy for them, good for Jokic, but yes. it's but it like what is what is exciting about their team? You know, they don't Literally. have that star quality, that things that makes them interesting, exciting to watch. It's they're hard to root for. Like an oh, good for them, but they didn't really care. Exactly. I have like no strong opinion at all. No strong opinion. Very indifferent. Yeah, maybe you- that should be our category. Like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Love to eh. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you also have Miami Heat here for Love to Hate. They knocked out the Bucks, the Celtics, all these really good teams, and you're excited for them, but you knew right. that they were they gonna win yeah you knew that they weren't gonna win at all so it was tough because right. i'm like maybe if it was Giannis versus Jokic, it would have been a better series right. you know or the Celt. even though i hate the celtics and i didn't want to see them they probably would have given more of a challenge to the nuggets for so sure even though it was an exciting kind of story like wow the heat you knew how it was gonna end very true you knew how it was gonna end. they didn't have enough very talent true. to compete they just didn't No. Yeah, that's a good love to hate. And we both agree, hate to hate are the Celtics. We, you know, as New Yorkers, we just have an aversion to that's everything like, you know. Boston, New England. That like that's it. That's it. <gasps> um <laughs> moving on. <laughs> we also, yeah, Shelby's not a big Kevin Durant fan. I know. I mentioned this. Super briefly. team hopper. All he does is join super teams. I'm gonna join Golden State. I'm gonna join Brooklyn. I'm gonna join Phoenix. Right. It's just so annoying. It's too much. It's too yeah. Much. Fair, fair point. And I mean, if we haven't made it clear, we'll make it clear one more time. We love Steph Curry. He's our love, love Golden love. State. He's our love to love. We Steph wish Rickless. all the best to him and his <laughs> family. Great. <laughs> so great. I know. I'm sure all the non Steph fans are like turning up this podcast. This is all I know. Too they're like, Steph these love. girls. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Okay, Shelby. Guess guess what? What? We have a new segment. We have a new game. Stop. Not a yes. new segment. Okay, so get excited, everyone. Okay. So this new segment is called Red Flag, Green Flag, One, Two, Three. Ooh. So it's like a play on, you know, the, the children's game. You know, you played as a kid at recess. Red light, green light, one, two, three. Also made popular by Squid Games recently. Um, so new segment. Red flag, green flag, one, two, three. Okay, so Here I'm going to ask if something or someone is a red flag or a green flag. Ooh. And you got to you gotta tell me what you think and give okay. me your response. Okay? I'm ready. So, and this is all related to the NBA today. Great. So, Shelby, is it a red flag to join a super team? Yes. <laughs> no doubt. A hundred percent. A thousand. Really? Yes. But I'd caveat that it's a red flag to join multiple super teams. At right. this point, everyone in the NBA mm. is leaving their team. They're partnering up with other stars. Like, it's so common right. that I can't be mad at everyone. For me, it's when you start to join multiple. Like what Kevin Durant's doing. Right. It's crazy. He's just hopping, 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 hopping. Hop, hop, hop. Like a hop. rabbit. <laughs> 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 Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and I'm sick of it. It's annoying. Yeah. So asterisk, even redder flag to join multiple yes, super multiple teams. Got teams. it. Got it. Exactly. Okay. That's right. Okay. Shelby, mm-hmm. is it a green flag for a small market Ooh. to win the finals? Oof. Technically. So no, here's the thing. <laughs> I think it's a green flag for the NBA. That's great. Okay. You right, know, the right. Denver Nuggets, they recruit and draft these people and mold them and grow with them and they win the title that's great for the nba i think it's awful mm-hmm. for fans it's awful <laughs> for the general public Was awful. anyone talking about the nba finals and the nba playoffs no would they have been talking about it if lebron won and got his fifth mm. ring and tied kobe right. and was one closer to michael yes right it's so, like what he did with cleveland exactly. right exactly mm-hmm. so i think good for the nba and how they're trying to run teams but not good for everyone else good point thank you shades of green shades Shades of green green. shades of green um 
hunter green green. (laughs) yes hunter green flag got it got it got it okay well thank you for playing our new game red flag green flag one two three okay well we'll we'll keep doing it and see how how y'all feel about it okay so give me your overall parting thoughts about this season of the nba yes up and down season with an up and down playoff sadly plagued by injuries and Mm -hmm. surprises but there were some really good games and really good series but it ended in a blah which was Eh. tough it could have been a bang and it was like a a pit pat (laughs) (laughs) it was like a it's like a pin hitting the ground it was a pin (laughs) drop not a mic drop no no yeah it could have been really good but it ended on a like a Eh. sad note or not a sad note but like an eh and so I didn't love that but honestly I do think the fact that there's more parity in the league is good the Denver Nuggets won for the first time in their franchise history and so I think that's good I think it's good a different team won there's more parity in the parity in the league especially growing up we literally only had the Warriors and LeBron and the Spurs and all these teams for so long so I actually think it's good that we've had a kind of fresh blood win. Right. No, that's a good point. And apparently um, this was the most watched NBA finals in a long time. What are we looking yes. forward to? Well, you mentioned at the beginning, it's already been a crazy NBA offseason with a lot of trades. The biggest ones being Bradley Beal going to the Suns. Mm-hmm. He had been on the Washington Wizards. For years, not a great team, and he just got traded to the Suns, and in that trade, CP3, Chris Paul, got traded to the Wizards, Mm. and then the Warriors traded for CP3 and sent Jordan Poole to the Wizards. I mean, what? Ah! Chris Paul and the Warriors have like been like this, and now he's on their team? Crazy. Bizarre. 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 Super team. Woo! I know. Now I'm happy with the super team because I like the Warriors. <laughs> Come so for me, like, I know. So when it's, it's giving a team that Shelby likes. Yeah, it's okay. Yay, super team. We should have Woo! added an asterisk. <laughs> it's wow. giving him a right now. It is. Uh... It is. What can you do? <laughs> oh my goodness. So crazy Yikes. off season already. Crazy off season already. The NBA draft also recently happened. Mm. Victor Wembenyama is a very high profile number one pick from France. He's like seven, four, like oh really good. Yeah, Like everyone's been talking about him. The Spurs had the number uh, one pick and drafted him. I'm just curious to see if he's really going to be as good as everyone thinks. Like right. people have been saying he's the best pick since LeBron. That's like a lot wow, of pressure. Wow. That's yeah, wild. A lot of pressure. Yeah, and we'll see next season, you know, if the Spurs and the number one pick live up to the hype. And also, we'll see if Denver repeats. Hopefully not, because clearly Shelby and I are not super excited about the Nuggets. That would be the worst case scenario. Actually, no. Worst worst case case scenario scenario is the Celtics winning. And then then it'd probably be the Suns because Kevin Durant and the Super Team. And then it'd be the Nuggets repeating. Right. The levels of the worst case scenarios. Who's your NBA champion next year, next season? Who is it? I am going to pick the Bucks. Mm. I think Giannis is going to come back hungry and angry. He got bounced in the first round. He's going to be ready to go. Oh, okay. Good pick. Yes. Um, And I'm going to pick the Warriors. CP3, newest edition. I think, I think it's going to be Your Bay good. Area showing. Bay Area. Bay Area. That's it. Um, <laughs> gold-blooded, as they say. Yes. <laughs> it is. I true can't. Fans. I true can't. Fans. So we'll see. We'll see if our predictions come true. Yes. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Oh, thank you. Hope you enjoyed our analysis yes, for all you on NBA the NBA. Fans and yes. People wanting to learn more. Hopefully this yeah. is helpful. Now you know. You can speak about all the NBA things going on. I know. Basketballers right here. Basketball girlies. That's right. Basketball girlies. Sports Swish. Swish. (laughs) Toby. (laughs) I cannot. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Follow us on on Instagram at Sisters Who Watch. Listen, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. We're on TikTok. We're on Twitter. We're on all the socials. We have a website. Yes. LinkedIn. Follow us. Find us. 
Yes. Bye, everyone. Thank you for supporting everything. <laughs>